Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you this morning. Romans 13 is actually yesterday's reading and reading through the Bible in a year. Romans chapter 13. We're loving Romans 12. Um, it's all, it's good. Romans is a wonderful book. Romans 13. Let every soul, verse 1, be subject unto the higher powers. You know, nobody wants higher power. Nobody wants a boss. Nobody wants to report to anybody. Nobody wants to keep the rules. They ought to say, I don't... Uh, Let's, let's just take, for instance, First Step Shelter. First Step Shelter has some rules. I don't think they have rules that are, that are uh, unbearable or unreasonable. They, they have rules. You've you got to be drug tested. You can't take drugs. you gotta, you got to have a, a, a curfew what time you have to be in at night. Um, they're actually quite lenient. You can smoke cigarettes when you're out there. Uh, you can wander around during the day. You're supposed to be looking for a job, but they don't really press the issue. You've got to, like when you, you know, like when you got unemployment, you got to turn in papers that you're looking for. A job. You know what I mean? You can play the game, make out that, you know, you know what I'm talking about. But I mean, it's it's a thing that you can go there and, and keep some basic rules that ain't really that big a deal, but most people don't want any rules. They're free spirits. I, um, all through my ministry, I've run into free spirits. I remember one time we had a very, very large Sunday school in uh, Milwaukee, and I mean like 1,000, 2,000, sometimes 3,000 kids in there, and sometimes the parents came, and, and someone came um, to the... Um, I, I was in the auditorium with the kids. There's like 1,500, 2,000 kids in the auditorium. And one of my workers came and said, um, uh, that was before they they went to their classes, a very, very large building. And uh, it was it was an old uh, elementary, not a, it was a middle school. Had two gymnasiums, 1,250 seat auditorium. It was a beautiful building. It was a whole block of property. And uh, they came to me, and he says, "There's a uh, there's a woman won't won't come uh, in the church." I taught the adult class; the kids went to their classes. You know, you, you know, like you have graded classes in school or in Sunday school, you have graded classes. And uh, <clears throat> she said that she's going into class with her kid. She ain't coming in my class. You, you might not agree with this, and you, you have your right to to disagree, but you don't have a right to stay in church. <laughs> if you disagree, <laughs> you have a right to go home. <coughs> See, some, some people, a lot of people like to come in here. This is a much smaller version of what that was. But a, a lot of people like to go wherever they want to go and just do what they want to do. And she says, I'm not coming in the adult class. I says, well, I want to go to my, I said, you can't go to your child's class. I, and, 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 and she says, well, I'm going to. I says, no, you're not. Who can stop me? I said, I can stop you. I'm the pastor of the church. I have the authority to stop you from going into the children's class. Now you might say, oh, you should have let her. Well, that's okay. I mean, you know, then what you're saying is, uh, because this is a small scale, but when you get up to 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, you just let people start doing what they want. you got hell on earth. Because everybody just wandering around doing what they please. Yeah, there's no order. But the, but I just use that as an example. And, and, and she said, wherever I go, I'm a free spirit. That's what she told me. She said, I'm a free spirit. Mama told me that. I says, ma'am... I respect you, and, and I says, but we don't have free spirits here. We have the Holy Spirit, and we have rules. Now, a lot of you going to get mad. Somebody might get them and walk out. I don't know. We had two walk out already today. They, they, they were repeats from years ago. <laughs> I knew the one was trouble, but I, I, I didn't remember the other one. 
I don't think he was. I, maybe he was, but I, I knew. I, listen, she was a handful of trouble. I remember her. Because usually them images stick in my brain, you know. She was talking to me outside. Or whatever. It, 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 forget about that. Just forget about Christine. Every soul shall be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. Now, don't forget that. First step shelter, there's no power but of God. Jail, there's no power but of God. Oh, let me think of some place you could work around here. Wawa, there's no power but of God. Uh, you have to have a power structure. And... Everything starts with God and works down. There's a speed limit out here on Ridgewood Avenue because of God. It's a law. If you didn't have any speed limit out here and you could go 100 instead of 40, you'd have a little problem, wouldn't you? I don't know how they do it in Germany on the Autobahn. I guess it's just out in the wide open. I don't, I don't really know much about But I know there's a, there's a highway in Germany called the Autobahn. You go as fast as you want. Yeah. It must be out in the boondocks. I don't know. I don't, but it is in Germany they have that. Anybody ever been on the Autobahn in Germany? I've heard of it. Well, okay, it's going through the forest, whatever, well, whatever, but it, 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 it could be safe, I don't know, uh, to have unlimited speed, I don't know how that could, you know, that, 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 could, that could be a touchy subject. For there is no power but of God, for the powers that are ordained of God, whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. Did you know all of the, <coughs> in, wherever you go down through history, the rules that are made and the laws that are made are basically patterned after the Bible. Uh, like you can see, um, uh, you can take the Bible and you can take uh, the Sharia law of the Muslims. And they have a lot of good things in their Sharia law. And they, they have things that, 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 that are, are against what God says. Of course, uh, the one thing that that ought to concern you and I. The Sharia law says that um, uh, they're going to kill Jews and Christians. <laughs> that's that's their mandate. That's Muslim. That's in the Quran. If you ever studied the Quran? You can find it in there. Quran. Uh, Sharia law, and uh, they want to kill uh, Jews, Christians, and Americans. Jews one, Christians two, Americans three. So, uh, but, but law, there, there, there's a lot of, like a lot of people say this, well, your Bible and Christianity has a lot of the same law that other religions have. And that's true. And that's true. But society in general has to have laws and rules. When you don't have it, you have chaos and anarchy. That's, that's how you have overthrows of government. And when you have no police, like they were here uh, a couple of years ago, they were saying, uh, dissolve the police department. How'd that work out? Not so good. Didn't work out so good, did it? You gotta have police. You gotta have authority. You gotta have stop signs. You gotta have red lights. You gotta have rules. You gotta have a penalty. And, 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 and in the in the Bible, it has certain penalties. Well, in, in the Old Testament, you know, the rules, if you were a disobedient child, uh, it wasn't, if you do that one more, I'm going to count to three, and if you do that one more time, you're going to have to go in time out. Well, if you were a disobedient child doing certain things, you were a goner. It's in the Bible, Old Testament law, Jewish law. Yeah, yeah. Go to own any old country like that, people are more like that. Well, yeah. Well, they, well, they, well, well, they have it in uh, uh, in uh, in strict Muslim countries. 
If you're a queer, you're in trouble. That'd do you in. That'd throw you off top of a building. I don't know. Well, it's what it used to be in the Old Testament, too, you know. In Jewish law. If you're homosexual, you're death penalty. Adultery, death penalty. Disobedience to parents, death penalty. <laughs> I'm glad to change all that stuff, aren't you? Boy, we'd have the bodies piled up out here in Ridgewood when we... We, we, uh, uh, every morning we get a pile out of there from the night before. Some of you swallow and ain't laughing. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resists the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves. What's that next word? The last word in verse two. What is it? Damnation. Damnation. Sounds like hell to me. Yes, sure so you better you better start listening to God. You better start listening to the cops. And you better start listening to them at first step. And you better start listening where you work, because a lot of you you work and you can't make it a week or two, and because it's the rules are too tough and you quit. Because you don't you don't want to abide by the rules at first step or wherever you work. For rules are not a terror to good works. You see, saved people and God's people have no problem with rules of the Bible. And most all rules or discipline are patterned from the Bible. But the reason you don't like rules and don't like anyone to tell you what to do or anything because you're a rebel. Rebel. Rebellion. And you go from one place to other. I don't like this. I don't like that. I want to do my own thing. I mean, people, I've and, and I've had programs for 50 years of men's programs, family programs, women's programs in Milwaukee, all of that mostly. But authority is from God, and you got to have rules. You got to have cops. Got to have bosses. Got to have governors. You got to have presidents. Got to have kings. Got to have rulers. Got to have chain of command. And don't ever forget, God's in charge. And anything that happens below, anything that happens on this earth, God allows it. He doesn't approve of it all. Don't get me wrong. I don't know you approve of it. But he can snuff it out in a second. You can read in the Bible or you can see in history how some leaders that were, they were, they were, uh, they, they conquered the world. And yet God would snuff them out like, boom, it's done. That's God. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Quit shaking your fist at God and not abide. Because when you, when, you, when you fight authority and you rebel against authority, you rebel against God. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Hey, you better be. If you say, I ain't afraid of nothing. Well, you better be. I ain't afraid of God. Yeah, okay. You atheist, whoever you are, whatever. For rules are not terror to good works, say people, but to the evil, rebels. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Uh, good means godly. God is good. Devil is bad. Verse 4. For he is a minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. Huh? You want to live against the Bible? You better, you better, you better get afraid. You better get scared. You better fear God. I don't fear him. Go to hell if you want. That's your, that, that's your choice. For he beareth not the sword in vain. You know what it means? He beareth not the sword in vain. Uh, the sword means capital punishment. That's what the sword is. That this verse right here, it means that that uh, that God has ordained capital punishment for certain crimes. 
in this day and age in civilized nations, uh, not third world nations or Muslim nations, but it's basically for um, murder. Treason, you can be, in, in, in America, you can be, your life can be taken for treason, too. A lot of people didn't know that. They haven't done it in, like, a long time, but it used to be done. Not in a long time, it hasn't. For he that beareth not the sword in vain, capital punishment, for he is a minister of God. The guy that goes like this on the electric church, zzz, the old Sparky, we used to have old Sparky in Florida, you know. Not a, uh, not a inject uh, something to kill you. And he stopped that for a while because he said it was inhumane. Can't be no more humane way to kill someone and shoot something in their vein and they're gone. It's like when you take your dog or cat to the Humane Society. They just, they just take that needle, stick it in their heart. <coughs> Cat's gone, dog's gone. They just do that with people now, too, before they made it a little more. You could smell hair burning, and and, uh, and I don't know if you could hear it or not, but um, I think that was by design to, to show the horrendousness of the sin that they had committed <laughs> and the punishment for the sin. For he is a minister of God, a revenger to execute, execute, execute wrath, Upon him that doeth evil. Verse 5. Wherefore ye must needs be subject. Not only for wrath. That's for punishment. Wrath. Executor. Guy pulls an electric chair. Guy shoots the needle in your vein. Kills you. The sword it was called in the Bible. But also for conscience sake. That's. For the picture in, in, in lieu of. Uh, our conscience. We should have, you. some people have a seared conscience. But we as God's creation, uh, of course, if, if we're saved, we generally have a conscience. We know the difference between wrong and right. You know, some have a fuzzy view of it, of what's wrong and right. Some, some have no conscience at all. They're just there. Whatever they want to do, they do. Wherefore, ye must needs be subject not only for wrath, but for conscience sake. For for this cause pay ye tribute also for they that are God's ministers attending continually unto you. you got to pay your taxes. Pay your taxes. I know Christians that don't pay taxes. They're wrong. The Bible says pay your taxes. Render, therefore, to all their dues. Tribute to whom tribute is due. Pay your taxes. Custom to whom custom is due. That's like a tax, too. Fear to whom fear. That's a leader. The cops. Whatever. Who's, who's ever in authority. You need, you, need a, you need to be subject to authority. You need to learn how to say, yes, sir, no, sir. And do right. Be in subjection. Nobody wants to be in subjection. Like, remember, I told you about the free spirit lady coming to Sunday school. I almost had to call the cops on her. She was so adamant that she's, I said, You can't have free spirit in here. She said, I ain't leaving. I said, The next step is call the police. You wouldn't call the police, ma'am, if you don't leave, because I got a whole bunch of people in that auditorium, adults, waiting for me to teach them, and I had to walk out of there because of you. Because you wouldn't leave, and I'd deal with you. And I says, "You better walk out now, or the police will take you." Out. I've never heard of such a thing. Well, she—I I guess she—I don't know if she was or not, but she thought she was used to just going wherever she wanted, and do whatever she pleased. Don't work that way. Fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Verse eight: Owe no man anything, but to love one another. For he that loveth. Another has fulfilled the law. Did you know that? Did you know that God is love? Now you you've got a wrong concept of love. You think love is a wishy-washy thing that God says you can do every, anything you want, everything's okay. That ain't love. Did you know judgment? 
comes with love. There's a psalm that talks about his mercy endure forever. I forget the number of the psalm, but it, in every verse says his mercy endureth forever. And he said he killed kings because his mercy endured. Mercy or love, that has to do with killing a king? Yeah, that's what the Bible says. Yeah, it's not just your wishy-washy God that, uh, that, like people tell me, well, God knows about me and he understands and he forgives. And you think you can just live like the devil and rebel against God and everything's going to be all right? No, you're going to split hell wide open. Like this guy today. He knew all about it. I'm blood washed, born again. What does that mean? You couldn't come up with the answer. I started talking about repentance. Huh? One percent here, I might go ahead. You got the wrong answer. He said he's a thousand percent sure. That's what he said. I don't know how you get a thousand. I thought it was only a hundred percent. I don't know where people get. But like my kids, like my grandkids come around, they say in school, uh, they got 125%. Uh, I said, 100% as high as you can go. No, we got extra credit. <laughs> you can't get over 100%. I never could when I was in school. I don't know why these kids can now. <laughs> you know what that means? They can put some little Mickey Mouse stuff in there and, and uh, they can have an F grade and get a B or an A because <laughs> extra credit. I haven't, I haven't figured it out. For this cause, pay ye tribute. I read that already. Owe no many thing but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Love is the key. God is love. Let's read about it. For this thou shalt not commit. Watch out now. I'm going to step on your toes. YouTube, Facebook, church. For this... Thou shalt not commit adultery. Did anybody, anybody in here don't know what adultery is? Anybody in here don't know? Okay, y'all know what adultery is. The same thing as fornication, but uh, adultery is a married person. Fornicators is not married. For this thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Now, it looks like here, God usually puts things in order. So adultery is worse than murdering somebody. I think sexual sin is the worst sin that can be committed. Sexual sin. And yet, a lot of people in here, you don't think nothing of it at all. Don't even, it, it, it don't even twinge your conscience at all. Everybody lives like that. Lives like cats and dogs. Adultery first. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness thou shalt not covet and if there be any other commandment it is briefly comprehended in this saying namely thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself so if you do that you ain't going to do none of the other okay if you love your neighbor as yourself you're not going to commit adultery you're not going to kill you're not going to steal you're not going to bear false witness you won't covet Verse 10, love worketh no ill to his neighbor. You do good to people. You don't do them bad. Therefore, love is a fulfilling of the law. See, love is a fulfillment of the law. But remember, God, God is the one that loves, and he fulfills the law, but he brings wrath because of love. Did you know that love, God must bring wrath because of love? He can't let no... Uh, he can't let wicked people into heaven. That's a, that's a no sin place. That's a no sin zone. If you, if you won't repent of your sins and turn from them, you ain't going to go to heaven. You think you're going to drink it up and dope it up and sex it up and go to heaven? You ain't going to heaven. You'll be going with your daddy to hell. That knowing the time, that now is high time to awake out of sleep. Wake up! For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Verse 12. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Cast off the works 
of darkness. I mean, you know, you can flippantly, and I'm not mad at anybody, but you take things so lightly. Well, you say, well, smoking ain't a big deal. Well, no, it's, it's, it's not as bad as shacking up, that's for sure. But it ain't the best thing to do. It ain't good for your health. So I, you say, well, it isn't that important. But, you know, if you joke about it, ah, go ahead and have another coffin nail. I call it coffin. Maybe I shouldn't even call it that either. And by the way, in, in, in as far as the severeness of sin, of course, cigarettes ain't nowhere where adultery is or fornication. I mean, cigarettes are way down the line. There are about as many people committing adultery, fornication, and queers around smoke cigarettes, too. Don't hardly think it's any different. Big difference. I don't think cigarettes will keep you out of heaven. I think being a drunkard says no drunkard shall inherit eternal life. If you're a fornicator, if you're a queer, that keep you out of heaven. I don't think cigarettes keep you out of heaven. In fact, there's only one, you know, there's only one sin that keeps you out of heaven. You know what it is? Anybody know? No, mur no murder won't keep you out of heaven. Because we said adultery is worse than murder. That's what the Bible says. What's the one sin keep you out of heaven? Huh? Yeah, and the, the real meaning of blasphemy is you won't, uh, uh, you, uh, you blaspheme against God by rejecting Christ. If you will not take Christ as your Savior, you're going to hell. It's the only sin that will send you to hell. You can be a queer, be an adulterer, be a murderer. You can, you, the, the sin that keeps you out of heaven is denying Christ. And when you deny him, you blaspheme the Holy Ghost. God's not willing that it should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Yeah. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Anybody got any darkness you need to get rid of today? Huh? Can you think of it? Yeah, can you think of it? Yeah. Me too, preacher too. Me too. Marcus too. Even with his Jesus hat on, he's got darkness. <laughs> Marcus is my friend. <laughs> been my friend a long time. Right, Marcus? We've been buddies a long time. <laughs> the night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Come to the light. It's shining for you. Jesus is the light of the world. Change your ways. Repent. Couldn't get that old boy to talk about repentance today, could I? He just couldn't wait to tell me off. I think that's why he come in here to tell me off. I think he wanted to do it in the middle of the service. I don't know. Anyway, we smoked him out earlier than that. I, I know where people are coming from when I talk to them a little bit. So I just follow up on it. But put away, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. I love that saying, Lord Jesus Christ. I don't like Jesus because there's a thousand of them. I like Jesus Christ or I like best Lord Jesus Christ. I like Emmanuel, God with us. That's Jesus too. Just Jesus. Got a ton of them around. 99.9% .9 of the Jesuses, there's hundreds of them, maybe thousands of different ones, different ways that they say they're the Savior. They ain't. There's only one Jesus. And like it says here, put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. What does that mean? It means quit your sinning. You repent and get saved, God will keep you out of sin. If you're really saved, the same faith that saved you can keep you out of sin. I don't care what sin it is. Because you passed the benchmark of believing in Christ and the Lord Jesus. You put on the Lord Jesus Christ, so you're saved. And if you're truly saved, there ain't, there ain't nothing that the devil can get you with. You can quit.
My buddy in the back row been having battles with stuff. He keeps calling back. I don't come to see you, Pastor. Amen. He prayed with me over the phone, cried. Then he come in. You don't mind me saying this, do you? Does it bother you? He come into church and when he heard me preach and then he seen what was going on, he, he says, it ain't funny, but it was funny. He got kind of a terrorized look on his face. And he says, this ain't what I'm looking for. It was, it was too heavy. It wasn't his... That wasn't going to be his bag. I'm not going to tell you what he said and what he wanted to do. It. That's, that was, I mean, I, I don't, anyway. God bless you. You're back today. Amen. After many promises, he's back today. Amen? Amen. You can hit, you can get this altar today and you can get it right today. All of you can get it right. Why you keep walking in darkness and don't want to come to the light? Live like the devil. You die in that state, you're going to hell. But put thee on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no, not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. That's it. The lust of the flesh. Lust of the flesh. Fill in the blank. I'll fill in my blanks. How about yours? What, what's your lust of the flesh? Is it one thing, two things, ten things, probably twenty? I don't know. We all got a bunch. How, how many of you got more than one? Yeah. How many of you got more than ten? We, might, You know, if you start thinking about it, you're going to have to revise your answer. Because <laughs> it's all it has to do with the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That are not of the Father, but are of the world. And the world passeth away in the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. First John 2, 15, 17. Yeah. We're done. Another tough message by Varga. People will call me out for it. I even got relatives calling me out now. <laughs> They might have thought it before, but they wouldn't call me out. Now they call me out. I don't care. Take the world. Give me Jesus. I don't care. Who, I don't care. The Lord Jesus Christ. Give me. Not just. I don't want to get one of them false Jesuses. Let's pray. Heart, Heavenly Father, thank you. Authority. God demands to be feared. He demands to be loved. He demands to be worshipped. Have no other God before you. The Heavenly Father, getting to Him through the Lord Jesus Christ, the wonderful Savior, through the blessed Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I'm saved. April 4th, 1969. I hope you are. If you are good, if you're not, you need it today. You know if you're saved or not. The only one on earth knows you're saved is you and God. I think some of you are saved. I hope folks are saved. Only one I'm sure about is me. The only one you can be sure about is you. Help us, Lord. Save that sinner nearest hell. Pray the sinner's prayer with me if you're here in church. Get saved today. Repent. Pray the sinner's prayer with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe you sent your precious Son the Lord Jesus Christ down to this earth to save sinners like me. Lord, you're not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I turn from my sin now and repent. Turn from my sin. Trust in your shed blood and the power of your resurrection, the gospel, the good news. I receive you. You promised in Romans 10, 13, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm repenting and turning from my sins now. I call upon you to save me with all my heart. And I ask it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen.